All right. Well, I'm going to show you um, my palette and all the materials that I use to paint every day. Here's my really messy setup. Um, <laughs> right now, it's kind of in the corner of our um, of what will eventually be the large studio. But right now, um, since we're working on the house, um, it's kind of uh, the studio is being used somewhat as a living room. I kind of like it though. It's fun having the kids close by and everybody else. Um, I've got my lights up there. Um, a bank of eight uh, fluorescent lights, light tubes. Turn them on for you real quick. Um, you can see that they're, um, there we go. All of them are just a, different colors. Um, some of them are like kitchen and bath, some are plant grow lights. Gives me a nice uh, nice white light, full spectrum. Um, here are the colors that I usually use. Um, just go through them one by one and show you about how much I put on. First I've got ultramarine, you can't see that there, but ultramarine blue. This one happens to be a Rembrandt brand, but uh, brand doesn't matter that much. It really is just personal preference. And the amount I squeeze out is uh, dioxazine purple next. The amount I squeeze out is really just what I think I'll use that particular day on, on whatever painting I'm, I'm using. Viridian uh, hue in uh, this particular brand works well for me. Um, it's a very blue-green color. Um, in other brands, it's usually phthalo green. I use it as a blue as much as I do a green. Um, white, titanium white is what I use. This is by Lafranc. I really like the consistency. It doesn't dry out too quickly, so I would recommend that particular brand. But other brands just work fine. Again, just personal preference. I do like Rembrandt. Um, Ivory black next. Ivory black to me is a as a more um, colorful, if you will, uh, black. It uh, it's not so so much of a dead color, not a straight gray black. Got cadmium yellow light, and cadmium red or red light. I kind of interchange those. You can see that that one's a little darker than what I had on the palette before. Uh, permanent alizarin crimson. The permanent is extremely important. <laughs> it's not a true alizarin crimson. It's kind of a modern replacement. You definitely want to get the permanent in whatever whatever brand you get. I definitely like Windsor and Newton for that. Um, burnt sienna is next. I use a lot of that and I, I feel like that Winton brand is just fine for that. It's a slightly cheaper brand. There's raw umber. I kind of treat that one almost as a black. Actually, it's kind of a, a gray brown. Indian red, which is kind of a bluish rust color. Slightly on the blue side of things. It's really nice for landscapes. Um, it's not a super powerful color. It's um, fun to use. Sometimes I use transparent oxide red over in this brown section by my other reds or terra rosa just depending on the painting these are ones that i don't usually have on my palette but they're fun to use sometimes um there's a space there between the purple and the blue that i like to leave for cobalt here's my plain air backpack with a few extra tubes in here got an extra tube of indian red because it's useful in landscapes a lot well i i always put my all my paints in the in the backpack. There's the one I'm looking for. Cobalt blue. It's an expensive color, um, but I think I'd say it's indispensable. Um, you just uh, have to have it for for skies, I'd say. Um, in between my red and yellow, I like to sometimes put cadmium orange. Um, just kind of makes things faster, so I don't have to do as much mixing sometimes. So there's my palette. Um, also, I've got my jar of uh, uh, odorless paint thinner. 
I used to use real turpentine, but it smells pretty strong. This has a nice little springy uh, thing in it that's nice to brush the, the brush against, helps get it clean. And my Viva paper towels, something nice, nice and thick. Thick paper towels are, I'd say, a must. You don't want thin, cheap ones. Here's some 50-50 uh, a 50-50 mix of oil and and my medium, my thinner. Um, if I'm painting a, a wash, you want to ha have that instead of just thinner. Um, it's, it binds it together. And here's my turpentine and Demar mix for um, for uh, uh, varnishing the finished paintings. I'm always experimenting with different varnishes. I uh, happen to like the smell of that one, <laughs> which is why I still sometimes go back to that. Here's my collection of brushes. I say collection because I don't even use them all. I've got different uh, styles. The one I just touched was a, uh, a bristle brush, a lot of those, and this one is a sable, nice and soft. Uh, this one's by Connoisseur, Red Sable really like that brand, but any any red sable, it's going to give you a nice um, detail brush. There's another soft brush, it's a uh, kind of a watercolor brush actually, just uh, nice for creating some soft edges. This one's a Lang Nickel. Um, as far as I'm aware, those aren't made anymore, but a nice long bristled soft watercolor brush is nice to have, that kind of a variety of those. whole bunch of different sizes. This one is my little roll-up thing of, um, of brushes that I bring plain air painting, outdoor painting. Oh, here's the uh, Silver brand, Silver Grand Prix brushes. Um, their bristle brushes are, are definitely my favorite. They lose fewer hairs than any others I've seen. They have a real nice end to them. You actually want split hairs on your bristle brushes. Um, unlike on your head. <laughs> they hold the paint better, those split ends. Um, here's the the painting surface I'm going to be painting on today. Um, it's just, uh, I guess, untempered masonite or hardboard, and I've primed it with um, an oil, oil-based priming. Um, uh, I'm not going to recommend anything because you can use a variety of things, just whatever your preference is. Um, I've used acrylic and I've used about a dozen different brands. I'm kind of always experimenting with that. Here's my easel. Um, I found it at a basically a garage sale and then uh, it works for me. I've, I've put this pegboard on it, screwed it down, and uh, these little display things um, fit nicely in it. and well, that's what they're made for and I put this little uh, one by six across and that's my easel I can move it up and down easily so there's my setup um, enjoy <laughs> 